Now it's over to our engineering wizard and custom car builder, Jimmy DeVille. This time he's looking at a manufacturing process that was once regarded as pure science fiction, but is now becoming commonplace and changing the way classic cars are preserved. Ever since I was a young man and I realised that if you needed a part for a motor vehicle, nine times out of ten, you could manufacture it. I've been getting these hands dirty in machine shops all over the UK. But there's a revolution on the horizon which means these could be staying a lot cleaner. The revolution is 3D scanning and printing, and it's helping to keep classic cars like this MG on the road by making the production of replacement car parts faster and more affordable. I've come to KW Special Projects in Vista to meet Kieran Salter and learn more about the technology involved. Yeah, this. This, this is that way. way. That way. <laughs> 3D scanning is already allowing us to make virtual versions of our most cherished vehicles for use in the future. Well, that's why we're calling it digital archiving. Yeah. You're creating a digital library of parts that you can then use in the future for manufacturing. So, it's a bit like Jurassic Park for cars. The first part of the process is to take a digital scan of the car and it's straight out of a sci-fi movie. Right, come on then. This spaceship. <laughs> What of lasers. What is that? This is your 3D scanner. That's so ridiculous. I'm going to pass it to you. Please don't drop it. What are we talking then? Value? Uh, it's less than 100,000. <laughs> <laughs> OK, right. What do I... So, is it going to go boo boo boo? No, you're gonna, hopefully it's not going to hurt you. So I press the trigger and scan. Lasers come out. Yeah. And then the car appears on the screen. That's it? That's it. All right, here we go. This laser scanner is a far cry from the calipers and slide rule I'm more used to. It fires out seven lasers in a cross pattern, which make 480,000 measurements every second to produce an accurate digital image down to 64 microns. More detail than a human hair. And don't worry, it's safe for the human eye. Look at that! It's like painting the car onto the screen. The seat is literally perfectly appearing. You can see earlier where your buttocks have been. Yep. Literally, that is the level of detail. If I was to place my hand on the steering wheel, is that getting that? Yep. We now have your hand and arm archived as part of this MG. Look at <laughs> There you go. You can digitally remaster me. <laughs> Not only are the lasers getting an incredibly accurate image of each component, they're also recording the exact positioning of the parts in three dimensions. Look at that, the gear shifter, the dashboard, the seats, the floor of the car, it's all there. And once we got that data, it's completely portable. So we can store it in the cloud, we can keep it forever, and we can use it for doing all sorts of other activities later on in the car's life. Once a part has been scanned, it can be replicated by the 3D printer. But this one is light years away from the sort of thing you might have at home. This whole machine works inside a heated chamber. So that's sort of a giant oven. That's an oven. That's a giant oven, so it's keeping that plastic kind of molten so it sort of all bonds together. Exactly right. The most important thing is to stop it cooling down too quickly, which keeps it stable. What is that in there? This is a prototype for a wheel for this car. Right, so this is where I'm still a little bit confused because, forgive me if I'm wrong, but nothing on that car, certainly not the wheels, are made of plastic. This case, we're printing the prototype first to make sure that actually fits the car, and then we're going to use that prototype to make the tooling Having done a 3D scan of the wheel in the same way that I did with the MG, an exact plastic replica can be printed. This is then used to make a mould from which a metal casting will be made. So ultimately, we're still making the wheel in a casting, the normal methods, but we're using this prototyping technology to help us shortcut that process. So in the old days, you make a buck for casting. So someone in a fabrication shop would have sculpted that piece out of wood and that would have been put into the sand, made the impression which would have been cast. Would have taken quite a long time, probably a few months to make that buck. How long does it take to print? 21 hours and 32 minutes. So what that's doing right now is massively reducing the time scale in which you can make a product for like this car here. Time and cost. OK. So a process that used to take several weeks can now be performed more accurately in less than a day. Our replica wheel should now be just about ready. Oh, come on. All I need to do now is remove the support framework or scaffolding as it's known. Oh, look at that. 
going to tuck in, Kieran. Yeah, there we go. There it is. On wheel. So we've started with the car. We've scanned it with the laser gun. You've then taken that scan and turned it into a three-dimensional drawing on the computer. From that, you've created a perfect yeah, copy of that wheel. Exactly. And my hands are still perfectly clean. <laughs> Should we try it? Oh, look. I mean, look at that. That is bob on, isn't it? Yep. So from that, you can take your casting. You can get an exact replica of this wheel. That means that this car is now safe for the rest of its life because it's archived. Seeing this, I definitely am now living in the future. As well as 3D printing, keeping classics like these on the roads is also paving the way of car design. Mainstream manufacturers like Ford can develop new models faster and are now using their technology to design external bodywork components, which will affect the design and cost of producing future models. I'm going to be honest. When I arrived here this morning, I was slightly dubious that the technology I found inside that building was going to signal the end for the slightly dirty manufacturing and engineering that I absolutely adore. But it hasn't. It's added another layer to the engineer's toolbox, and it's a layer that's set to explode into a very, very exciting world.